We continue to preview the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Madison, South Dakota, and we get to visit with Josh Anderson heading into his 15th season as the head coach of the Dakota State Trojans. Coach, it's a privilege to get to visit with you today, as always. Uh, last season, one and nine. I, I know anytime you mention a record like that, to whomever, whatever sport, not quite what you wanted. Tell us a little bit about last season, then let's talk about this year. Well, uh, to start off, I finished my 15th season. I'm going into the 16th. So, you right. know, it's, it's kind of like somebody's age. After a while, you just kind of forget and move on and just keep going. So, uh, but no, last year. My wife uh, does that, Coach. My wife does that, just so you know. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's no problem. Yeah, you tell your wife I've stayed 25 for many years. I'm not going to go past that. So. Um, you know, last year was very, very enduring, and it was a very uh, – not intense, but just kind of a, a struggle mentally, physically. Um, the one and nine season coming off, you know, just honestly years of winning records and, and having success. And and we had such a great summer. We had the most participation we've ever had. And we were gearing up for a good season, but uh, ended up with just a crazy amount of injuries that got in our way. Uh, it wasn't um, anything you know, to do with our, our routine, our practice or things like that. And, you know, and then, like you said, most people are going to say, oh, you lost because of injuries. I mean, it's just tough to win when you have your best, uh, most experienced talent stand on the sideline with you. But but how we handled it, that's the key to that season that nobody will ever know outside of our team. You know, the one win was honestly a tremendous win for us. I mean, we're at the end of the season and our guys could have folded and quit and just, you know, kind of went through the motions, but didn't and found a way to win our second to last game of the year. Uh, <laughs> it was a tough win. We, we had lost to that team previously. Uh, they shut us out. And so for us to come back and then win, like, like it was a very big deal. And the whole thing I'm talking about with how our guys handled the season was the key thing. It wasn't the injuries. It was how we handled the injuries. Mm -hmm. Our retention was never better. We had the best retention we've ever had. We had the best fall GPA we've ever had. And that that has happened for us to have such a great spring. And then coming into this summer, we have more participation this summer than we did last summer. And so the guys know what happened, how it happened. They weren't pointing fingers. They weren't blaming. They weren't quitting. They stuck together. And really what we ended up coming out of that was finding true leadership and really building our culture um, just in, a, in the most unique way possible. It's not how coaches are going to try to do it. Like, hey, let's have all these injuries and see how they handle chaos and, and see how this goes and plays out. But like, yeah, if you're on the outside looking in, you see one and nine. But if you check the previous years, you're going to be like, wow, they forget how to coach, forget how to play football that year. And, you know, no, we had guys playing that we thought were going to play in their second, third year, maybe, and ended up having to play immediately. Um, just that's how it is. Right. That's that's how football works. Sometimes it's how life works. It comes at you and it's, you better be able to handle it and punch back. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be tough. And so I was very, very pleased and proud of how our our athletes, our coaches, our community, uh, our donors, our alumni, like, you know, they were all asking, but they were like, yeah, I see it. I see it. It's a bummer. Hang in there, you know? And so it was like our, our core of not just our football program, but our athletic department and our whole donor base and everybody was just, just awesome. And everything that we needed, because you can't have success in life, but in football, as we're talking about it without everybody. And I mean, everybody, not just people on the team. And so, that was very, very important to all of us and why we had the best retention we've ever had coming off a one and nine season and then a tremendous spring. And now an even better summer now, you know, hey, I can't wait. We're, we're calling it 1991 because we want to go from one and nine to nine and one. Obviously, 10 and 0 would be awesome. Eight and two is great. But, you know, it just is, is a lot more clever when you say 1991. <laughs> yeah. Palindromes are cool. They, they really are. So they go with that. I, I'm, I'm with you on that one, Coach. I, I wanted to, to talk about the, the team preview just a little bit now. And by the way, I, if anyone looks at the, your roster, it backs up what you're saying, too, about that retention. I recall uh, visiting with you last year, and, and there were, uh, weren't as many upperclassmen at the time. You look at the roster now. I mean, there are a ton of upperclassmen. They're coming back to be a part of what you have going on there, Coach. So I, I really appreciate you taking the time to mention that. Among those, Tyce Ortman is coming back. He's one of those players uh, that, that was injured last year. And I mentioned him in particular because, you know, he, he dealt with an injury. Numbers may not have been what he wanted them to be. Still wound up getting all-conference recognition. Unfortunately, Tyce hasn't, hasn't had a full season yet. This is going to be his third year. In the first two years, he hasn't had a full season. Just, you know, just unfortunate injuries for him. And both years he made second team all conference. I mean, he's just that talented. 
Uh, so obviously we're trying to do a little bit more recruiting around him to try and get him, you know, a certain amount of reps a game, but not try and lean on him so much to try and help him through the attrition of a season for his senior year and really see what he's capable of doing. I mean, we know what he's capable of doing. It would be nice to show it off to everybody else. So, uh, but yeah, Tice is one of the many examples and his attitude and his spirit and his energy is just honestly, it's through the roof and he's a great leader and guys look at him to see like, Hey, he was out. He came back for the last two games of the year last year. And even at about 70% was still really, really good. Um, and guys see him not quitting. And so they're not going to quit. And so it, again, just a, just a tremendous person, a tremendous family, a tremendous community he came from. Um, and then the things that he does as a leader in our program, uh, you, you just can't ask for a better person in those situations. And honestly, we got a lot of them. So that's the exciting part. Cause like you said, all these guys coming back, first of all, we were having a lot of guys back anyway, and now we have them. And we have these younger guys who got a ton of reps last year. Yeah. And so the competition on the team is just tremendous. And the experience is where we need it to be. Uh, you'd love to say I've got the fourth, fifth, and even because of the Rona year, you get a sixth year, seventh year senior. Those guys are great to have, but you know, we've got we've got plenty of guys that might be younger on the roster just because we did they didn't have to burn a year, but um a lot of experience, a lot of talent, and quite honestly, the best part is a lot of leadership and a lot of high character guys coming back, staying in the program, and doing things right. Coach, let's let's start with one of those. I want to talk about the offense right now. Trey Hedick came in midway through the season and finished the season for you to to go ahead and play on through. But he was one of those younger players that got called upon early on. Tell us a little bit about the offense. Well, the offense. Um, <laughs> It sputtered. We uh, we lost our first two quarterbacks the very first game of the year. And then the second game, our, our third string guy, who was a D2 transfer, he ended up ended up uh, breaking a bone in his non throwing hand. And <laughs> I mean, it just it just never ends. So we got our starter back for game three and then he ended up breaking some bones in his foot. Uh, in the middle of the second quarter. So then we ended up going with our fourth string quarterback that game. And two games later, we end up uh, having to go to Trey Hedick, who at the time was our fifth string quarterback. He's a true freshman, uh, a nine man athlete out of Selby, South Dakota, you know, had great success in high school. Uh, so it was no stranger to competition and, and football and just being a student of the game. And but we thought, you know, we thought Trey was going to be able to redshirt and, and honestly be able to sit for two years and learn. And, and so three years in and then the last two years had been in position to be the starter. But boy, did that changed quickly. And he got thrown into the fire uh, ha at halftime in one of the games that we got shut out at. But then I think four games later, we ended up beating that team because of Trey and his experience and his just he's nobody can be harder on Trey than him. And he's just he's so detailed in everything he does that he just was learning quickly and as fast as he could. And because of that, and again, because of his leadership, even as a true freshman, our guys rallied around him big time. And he just had a tremendous spring. And this summer is just he, he looks like a fifth year veteran and it's only going to be his second year. And he hasn't even played a full season. So Trey Hedick is just a very headsy, very, very smart decision making quarterback who, again, is going to be very accountable. You know, he makes a mistake. He'll be the first one to be on him. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, and 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 Trey, Trey is a, a great leader and a great person, another great family, another great community, um, you know, so. We're excited for him to be on the field for game one and see what he can do. Coach, are are, are there others on the offense that, that are coming back, or are you already looking? I, I, how'd your spring go to get to, to see some other players coming in? Any new faces on that offense? Ooh, new faces? Um, you know, I'm trying to think rolling through it. Austin Lake is coming back for his senior year. He's, he's a really good receiver for us. Uh, Nathan Cook at tight end, Owen Heath at tight end. And uh, then we talked about Trey and Tice. Um, our wide receivers will be the new faces. We got Tyson Grindy, who redshirted last year. He's going to be out there as a wide receiver and a uh, tremendous football track athlete. Um, and the other wide receiver spot right now is kind of open. Uh, we've already had some summer tweaks with the injuries, so we kind of got to find out who's going to be here in the fall. But honestly, we've got four or five to choose from that we know we can trust that can be out there and do really well. But then through the offensive line, obviously the key there um, from left tackle, Tyler Jetland, um, he's back. I just, I don't want to miss any because I honestly don't know who's going to start yet. I have a kind of an idea, but we've got a lot of competition there and a lot of good guys that can get the jo job done. So, um, you know, Sam Sather, uh, 
Mr. O'Neill on the right guard, and then we got uh, Uziel, uh, Uziel Ruiz uh, at the right tackle, and then Joseph Taylor was our left guard, and Josh Schaefer was our center, and and I think I already said Sam Sather, but if I didn't, I mean, I throw his name out there, and and we've got some young guys coming in who are here this summer already and just doing some some serious competition already, so that's what I'm saying. I really don't know, but I know our offensive line is bigger and stronger than they've ever been, and so that's exciting. I, I know that uh, our skill guys are super excited about that to have those big boys up front. So, uh, but they're all back, and it's um, there won't be one one true freshman out there this year, which might be for the first time in a long time. So that wow. is going to be great. Now, when you get experience on the line, either side of the ball, that 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 goes a long way. We're visiting with Coach Josh Anderson from Dakota State now, heading into his 16th season. Uh, at the helm there for the Trojans. I know that you get Brooks Jansen back. Of course, you know, we were talking about players that are coming back from, from injury. You get him back, though, for, for a new season. Uh, Jay Skogerbo, among, um, among those who had a good season for you last year, talk about your defense heading into 24. Well, you know, our defense was probably, as much as we've just talked about the offense, being down to our fifth-string quarterback, we got down to our fourth-string running back. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we were rolling through guys. It was unfortunate, but uh, our defense was actually far more banged up than anything. We run a 3-4. Um, two of our starting D linemen were out for the year. Uh, three three of our starting middle linebackers were out. Uh, and then we had uh, two of our outside linebackers had to kind of rotate through every year. Three of our starting defensive backs were out of the four. Like, we were depleted, and they still hung in there. They're tough kids. They're, 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 they're full of grit. You know, but now that – we're healthy this summer. Jay Skogerbo back at free safety is a, a fifth-year senior for us and just a, a four-year starter, uh, a tremendous, tremendous worker. Uh, and with him, I think we'll probably be Caden Nang. We're still kind of going through that too. But, again, it's kind of like the offensive line. We've got a lot of guys to choose from through our recruiting and through our retention and the guys healing up in the healing process. Uh, Tamari on Foster is another one that can play safety or corner. we got Blake Duran, Michael Foster out there at corner. Uh, we've got some new transfers that have – come in uh, this summer and making an impact and, and it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough because we've got a lot of good competition to choose from. It's a good problem to have. Um, but then in the middle, we moved uh, outside linebacker Colin Brugham into the middle. Uh, Terrence Sir has just been uh, tearing it up through this spring and summer. Outside linebackers kind of up in the air. We got uh, Chris Guipe. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, who else would be out there? <laughs> I don't know who's going to start. That's the key thing. I'm trying to. I'm trying not to just say names and let guys see this and think that they're going to be the starters because it's still kind of up in the air too. And so I get it, coach. Yeah, uh, but like I said, we moved Colin Brueggemann from the outside linebacker to the inside, and and Chris started last year. So I, you know, I, I say their names, but um, you know, on the defensive line, like you said, Caleb Dwyer will be back. Brooks Jansen had to sit out the entire last year, and he's back and healthy and tremendous. His brother, who sat out two years, is now back, Brandon Jansen. Uh, and then we got Casey Cauley, um, Luke Hemmen in the middle. Um, again, we're trying to be three deep on the D-line uh, just because of injuries and things like that, but just trying to keep their legs fresh. And so what we did do through recruiting and the healing process was really try and go and just get a massive amount of depth to create the competition. And that's what's happened in the fact that, you know, I really don't, I don't know who's all hundred percent healthy at this point, who's going to be back. I mean, I got a really good idea, but our defense is going to be uh, much, much improved just because of the depth through recruiting. Coach, let me pause there just for a moment too, and, and ask you this question with a three, four like that. It, I mean, how big is it to be three deep there on the line? I mean, I would think that that's more than just a luxury. That'd be something you'd, you'd almost have to, to to be pushing toward. Yeah, and on defense, the defensive line is the hardest to get. Kind of like on offense, it's the hardest position to recruit is the offensive line. Everybody needs them, and if you have any size at all, you get some big scholarships. Um, you know, and you just you gotta you gotta pay a little bit more, and it doesn't matter what level you're at. That's just the way it is. So on defense, it's the cornerbacks and the defensive line. And so then to be three deep, you really you really need to have guys that when you bring them in as freshmen or transfers, then you develop them that they stay. You know, and they and they develop into what what they want to be, what we need them to be. And that's really the key thing. And so that's kind of what we're coming into this year is through these injuries, guys getting guys back, um, and through the recruiting process and guys staying. Now we're starting to see that depth really, really show. And so, yeah, it, it, we had a 4-3 for probably my first eight, 
nine years while I was here. And to even be too deep, you know, that's that's eight guys that mm-hmm. you need on the defensive line. So we ended up going to a three, four defense, you know, and then to be three deep, you're only at nine. So even if you're too deep with quality guys, that's six guys. And so we really just tried to make that work for us with our recruiting process and with the area that we're in, because and this isn't a negative thing, but the guys who are five, ten to six foot to six one and from one hundred and sixty to two hundred pounds. I mean, my goodness, they're all over the place in the Midwest. And so we thought, why not have more of those guys? We can recruit more of those guys. Let's get more of those guys on the field through a 3-4 defense, through inside and outside linebackers, and even some strong safeties. And it's worked out tremendously for us. Well, special teams, you were talking about uh, free safeties. If you look at the roster and you look for Aiden Jane's name, you see free safety by there. But he was your kicker last year. (laughs) Tell us a little bit about special teams heading into this season. Well, Braxton Locker is actually the head of our special teams. I'll tell you that. He's our short snapper, long snapper, but that guy is Mr. Energy uh, all over the place. <laughs> he's over there trying to signal uh, offensive plays during during practice when he's got a little free time. He's over there snapping balls, you know, to the quarterbacks and seven on seven, just wants to be a part of everything. And he's cheering on everybody. So when offense is going against defense, he doesn't know who to cheer for. Whoever makes the big play, he's jumping all over him. But that's just ex- ex- who he is with his excitement level. But um Having him back is key. And then uh, Josh Smith um, was was a little bit injured last year and had some tweaks in his hip and his, and his thigh, I think. And so so to have him back and have him healthy is good. Um, but Aiden James last year, yeah, he did the kicking off and the PATs and field goals for us. Did a great job. Um, but he is a he is a free safety, came here to play free safety, but obviously stepped up for us when we needed him to. And then Cole Sillison, who was a receiver for us last year, did our punt and, and did a did a great job. Um, so, but there, there wasn't much that Cole, Cole Sillison, I don't know if I said the right name. I think I said Cole Paulson. No. <laughs> Cole's a great guy. He's outside linebacker on defense and a tremendous, uh, guy as well. So, but Cole Sillison was our punter and wide receiver. So, um, but again, the guy that just stepped in and helped us out wherever he could, you know, no complaint and just say, I can do it. Let me, let me step in here. And he actually had a really good leg. So, uh, worked out. But he's gone, and we moved Aiden back to free safety, and we, we've we've brought in some uh, – we've got some guys healed up, and we brought in an, a kicker to, to do all that kicking for us and take care of those duties. And we're pretty pleased with what we see already this summer. By the way, Cole Sillison – and you did say it right, Coach. Uh, okay. Champion of character as well. So, I mean, I want to throw yeah. that out there too. That That's a, a high honor, and always get to enjoy talking about that. Season gets underway seven weeks from today. A Thursday game. The Ag Bowl is going to be on a Thursday this time, and you all are hosting Dakota Wesleyan. That's always, I'm sure, a fun matchup, a, a good one to, to lead off the season. And then you go the next Saturday on the road at Nebraska Wesleyan, and then, of course, the North Star schedule gets underway for the final time, by the way. Uh, Jamestown coming into the conference this season, and you get to host them on September 14th. Tell us a little bit about the opening of your season. Well, Dakota Wesleyan, you're right. It, it's just a fun, uh, it's a fun rivalry game. I don't, and I don't know how they look at it. Uh, if, if you know if it's a hated thing for them or not, I, I really don't care. Like to us, it's fun. Uh, some of those guys that I mentioned, they're teammates, and we've got brothers on one team and on the other. Uh, it's a it's a fun event for the crowd for the guys because we recruited a lot of their athletes. They recruit a lot of ours, so we know each other. We've been on, you know, the, our guys have been on visits over there and vice versa, and so. Um, it, the reason it's a fun event is because no matter if we're playing in Mitchell or Madison, it's a good crowd and it's a it's a big deal and it, it's a big event around the state and we get a lot of people watching it and talking about that game. Um, so that's what that's what our recruits want to play in front of our good crowds, big crowds, good excitement. It's on TV, you know. It's just a it's a ton of fun. It's an easy to recruit to as well. Um, then that first game. All right, that's the tough part about, in my opinion, that's the toughest part about that game and that rivalry. It's the first game, and so you got a lot of things that you got to get ironed out. Tough, you you got to figure it out before or during the game, and then obviously hope you can hang on for a victory, um, which is tough enough in itself. And I wouldn't care if we played the first game or last game if we're undefeated or you know no wins. That game is always going to be a close game, and it's always going to be a fun, tight, aggressive game. The nice part is it's the first game, and there's usually a lot of uh, a lot of guys who are healthy for that. So you know you don't have those excuses. And they got us last year. Uh, they played very well. Came out hot in the first quarter. We were clawing back, just didn't get it done at the end. Um, but you know, good for them. And the thing is, is uh, we had some success against them uh, a few years prior, but nobody cares. 
you know, I, I don't care that they beat us last year. I mean, I do, but like that has nothing to do with this year. And I know it has nothing to do for them either. So they won good They They don't care. They want to win this year just as bad as we do. And so, but that's the best part about this rivalry too. So it's going to be a crazy opening night. We just built some brand new facilities. So we open, we have the first game it's egg bowl. I mean, honestly, we don't need to have anything when we play Dakota Westland, we can just play anywhere we could go up to eureka and play on their field and it'd be a big deal you know what i mean but because of our opening uh ceremonies with the concert on tuesday night then we play on thursday night and we open an egg bowl it's gonna be a super fun week a tough week on those that have to work and and, and put it all together but uh i know we'll, i know we'll pull through and get it done it'll be a big event that sounds like fun, Coach. And being where it is on the calendar, obviously, it, it could get some national attention as well, uh, just being one of those Thursday night games on week zero. So we'll be, we'll be keeping up, I promise, right here on Midwest Sports Net. We're definitely going to do that, as we will with the Trojans all season long. Coach, thank you so much for previewing uh, Dakota State with us today, taking some time with us today. We really appreciate it, and we will be following you this year. Well, I appreciate you having me on, uh, continuing to you know showcase Dakota State football. Um, it, it's a joy to talk about our team and our guys, you know, regardless of the season, regard, regardless of what happened. I'm excited for this season and uh, just appreciate you having us on here. Thanks for following us. And I tell you what, you look really good in Navy, man. Those DSU Navy colors look sharp on you. So it's uh, it's it's was specifically for you today, Coach. <laughs> well, you dress well. 